gets better. Say that it gets better. Oh, P.S. I'm oh, P.S. I'm gay. Hello, everyone in the podcast universe. This is Gayish, the podcast whose only FDA approved use is as a cure for homosexuality in large rodents and hairier pigs. Wait, 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 when did we get, <laughs> when did we get approved for anything? Uh, tomorrow. Great. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Are you ready for it? Yeah. Are you ready for this jelly? <laughs> the we, FDA approves jelly. We went from Taylor to beyonce but that's fine i'm mike johnson i'm guile Getz, and we're here to bridge the gap between sexuality and actuality and today we're going to talk about threesomes today we're going to talk about three sums one two three not only you and me to start it off i will sing the entire song three by britney spears oh god is that three, what it's about is it yeah really one two three not only you and me got 180 degrees and i'm caught in between oh my god she is a lyrical genius <laughs> It's so subtle, yet so poignant. Or whoever it is, is a familiar <laughs> genius. Uh, no, yeah, no one. <laughs> um, but first? But first. You want to go for it? Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I got real excited and yelly. Um, first of all, we would like to thank our Patreon supporter, Chris Sanders. Thanks, Chris Sanders. We appreciate you. We appreciate your beard. And your money. <laughs> that was in reverse order of how much we appreciate them. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that, I think that's all I have to say. Do you want to tell us things about the news? Sure, yeah, I got news. Great. I got news. I got news coming out my B-hole. We should... Um, my N-hole. You should... It's the news hole. Wait, oh, okay. <laughs> I, you're getting a little dicey. Um we, I, we should have like, you know, in Blue's Clues where he's like, we just, oh, maybe we could just use the Blue's Clues song. We just got a news. We just got a news. We just got a news. Wonder what it's about. Bow, bow, bow. That's what? That's Blue. Bow, bow, bow. Well, that happy song <laughs> is. We'll keep thinking about it. Gonna be in front of some real sad shit sometimes. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, the mayor of Padang. In Indonesia, uh, there, um, let's see, is that a man or a woman? Do we care? He, he, <laughs> his name is Ma Mahieldi Ansharula. How sure are you that that's the pronunciation? 44%. Wow. That's more than I think is, you should feel confident about. Yes. Uh, has ordered the arrest of LGBT plus people. So religious authorities can conduct exorcisms on oh, them. Oh boy. Okay. Gay people are possessed by demons. And they need to be cleansed. Oh. Um, Whenever a government wants to <laughs> cleanse something, <laughs> it's never gone great. <laughs> never. Never. This, that's just a blanket rule. That's absolutely right. Yeah. Ethnic cleansing. Yeah. Toilet cleansing. Anal cleansing. They're bad at that, too. <laughs> <laughs> the government? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, he, ha, uh, he, he has used the Indonesian army, the TNI, to target and detain queer people. Uh, and he said that their existence is down to, quote, the influence of jinn and devils, according to Indonesian news site Tirto. Um, so uh, the mayor, uh, whose region is home to more than a million people, said that, quote, we are using Rukia to repair them to leave, um, which I guess Rukia is a verb that means to like, exercise demons. Hmm. Um, he said that he was taking other steps to prevent people from being gay, like ensuring that children don't play or dress in ways that are different from the stereotype of their oh, assigned great. gender. Yeah. Quote, we have educational activities that are wrong in the family, said the mayor. He is a boy, but is given a female toy, given girls clothes or vice versa. Um, he said um, to prevent gayness, men in Indonesia should not dance elegantly. <laughs> <laughs> unless that dance is part of a male activity such as martial arts and criticized democratic elections which resulted in women winning power elections that equate men and women well that is also an indication in that direction he said <laughs> that okay <laughs> this is i mean it's so weird how this is partly horrifying <laughs> no i mean most all horrifying but like a little bit just like so funny cuz it's just so crazy and ridiculous like i if you 
if dancing elegantly made you gay, I would be so straight. <laughs> right. <laughs> there is no elegance about my dancing. I agree. <laughs> I've seen you dance. As an occasional <laughs> recipient of <laughs> my dancing. <laughs> yep. Um, yep. That's, uh, that sucks. That is that, yeah, I don't know. I have um, nothing to add other than, it sounds like, I mean, Chechnya, like, uh, is there just like, this backlash, I guess it, maybe it's just along the lines of like the right wing extremism that's this taking over some countries. I'm just in general thinking uh, of like uh, uh, why, uh. like what is happening. That the world's fucking place... crazy right now, man. That's what's that's what's happening. I guess, and you can just do whatever you want. Fuckers you... are everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Indonesia. Hey, this guy's name. <laughs> hey, Ma- Mahieldi. Mm-hmm. Your bullshit is bullshit. Yeah, and we hate you. Um, oh, I forgot to mention that you will be fined one million rupiah if you are a same-sex couple convicted of committing immoral acts or to anybody who is found to be acting as a transvestite. Um, that's 55 euros or 55 pounds, British pounds, to um, just for being oh. gay, I guess. Yeah. Well, you translated that to, for me into another non-useful measurement. Yeah. You might as well turn it into like watts or something. It's like a hundred bucks. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Next. You ready? Uh, well, I'm just so sad about that, and all we did was, like, joke about it, but shouldn't we... I, I mean, you got it left to keep from crying, I, I think, so. right? And, yeah. um, I mean, shit really is fucked, and we can't just be serious about it all the time, I don't think, especially when they make it so easy, because they're so dumb. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> if you, yeah, I mean, if there's one thing that's keeping us afloat, it's laughing at stupidity. Yep. Because there's, it's bountiful. It is a plenty. Just to ensure the accuracy of this podcast, one million rupiah, Indonesian rupiah, is seventy dollars and ninety-eight cents in U.S. dollars currently. Oh, okay. Right. Now I can afford to be gay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. At a hundred dollars. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> uh, Dave. Okay, moving on. Yeah. Uh, David Matheson. Do you know who David Matheson is? <laughs> He he almost started that band, but then he was like, ah, shit, Dave Matthews already got it. Yep, exactly. He, and so instead, because he couldn't live his dream of being a Dave Matthews band-like band, <laughs> um, he instead uh, decided to be a gay conversion therapist. Oh, shit. Oh, is this the one I heard of? <laughs> yeah. And then it was, okay, okay, go on. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, so after just, after just being a dick face for, for a, a long time, he now wants dick in his face. He's gay. <laughs> uh, he came out on Facebook on January the 21st. In 2018, he and his now former wife divorced, and he was trying to do the, like, yeah, I have gay urges, but I'm not going to act on them. Mm. And now, uh, the post that he said... Uh, uh, last week, uh, quote, toward the end of this decline of my marriage, I also realized that being in an intimate relationship with a man was no longer something I wanted to avoid. It had become a non-negotiable need, he wrote. Um, Truth Wins Out, which is an LGBTQ nonprofit that stands against anti-gay religious extremism, first reported the news. Um, yeah, so, so it just, it just, it just, it, it doesn't work. The more you hate gay people, the gayer you are oh. inside. Just take it in the ass. You'll be fine. <laughs> Everyone, try it once. <laughs> It'll be fine. Seriously, though, the more, like, rabidly, oh. v- virulently anti-gay you are, the more you want butt sex. Yeah. That's, there's, like, got to be math about yeah. that. I oh, think. no. Yeah, no. I think there's been studies and and Republicans that have proved that time and time again. Yeah. What is it Um, I posted and said... Uh, homophobia is gay. Homophobia is the gayest thing out there because it like just means you're gay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like the, I think it was Tony Perkins that focused on the family fucker who like wrote this dissertation about how like we have to outlaw gay sex because it's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. That's the first <laughs> thing I've heard that like kind of makes sense. Like it's going to be the downfall of society because everybody wants to do other yeah, dudes. Yeah. And we, have, we can't let that happen. Yeah. <laughs> That, I I understand that line of reasoning. <laughs> yep. Um, I like I so I saw that news story and I'm conflicted between. Welcome, there's a chance for redemption. You say what you're conflicted about. I will stop Welcome? putting words in your face. Yeah, like like. Okay, you finally, you saw the light. Welcome, oh, well, welcome to our tent. Welcome. Yeah, it has rainbows. Yeah, and vodka on tap. But <laughs> I don't know that he's invited to the rainbow. Like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So part of it is like, yes, congratulations, you've finally gotten over your shit. 
and accepted, but along the way you've done so much damage. So, yep. you know, it's hard to decide how I feel about this whole news. And part of me just, I mean, it all goes back to it's society's fault for making him think that that's even an acceptable route to go down sure. society and religion. So we can absolutely blame that. But like, then this guy, I, I, yeah, it's a, uh, it's difficult to feel great about him finally coming out. Well, he founded this conversion therapy clinic with another dude. I hope they end up. Oh, <gasps> Just because nobody else is going to. We found to. love in a hopeless place. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's what Rihanna's been singing about this whole time. <sighs> okay. So, next. Next. How have we not said thank you next in the news yet? Like, when you go on to the next one? Thank you. Next. next. Anyway. It's just a gay reference that we've been missing out oh, on. Oh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> What? Get it. <laughs> you do. I got it. I know. I got it. It's like from about. Just think this whole song. I think this. Why you know? I don't. How do you not know that? Are you saying words? Uh, Are you <laughs> like the in theater? What? Like in theater? Like thank you, fifteen. What the fuck is wrong? Thank you. Next, the Ariana Grande. There's a song called Thank You Next. Dan and I are in our 40s. You really she need says, to have lower expectations of us. Thank You Next. I, it's been what everyone has been saying for the past... Thank You Next. <laughs> okay. Wow. Um, <laughs> moving on. Yeah. Ending on a happy note. Ooh. Okay. So next month, February of 2019, on the cover of Parents Magazine, a same-sex couple, Sean T., Fitness, a fitness motivational speaker, and his husband Scott Blocker. Wait, and their twins. Wait, what? Sean T. Fitness. That's what he says. And he's a fitness coach. Yeah, that's fitting to stick in his ass. <laughs> 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 I don't know where that came from, but that's not a. Yeah, it says Sean T. Fitness. No one's name is Sean T. Fitness. Like he changed his name <laughs> to Fitness, right? He's a fake person invented by Republicans to uh, keep gay people occupied. Well, the, the cover of the the actual cover of the magazine says uh, Sean T. And maybe it's just a uh, uh, like a mistake here. <laughs> yeah. But Sean T. Fitness, coincidentally, <laughs> an overweight chef. <laughs> but but Gay Star News says Sean T. Fitness, that's, a fitness motivational speaker. That's hilarious. I love it. Yeah, like it's it's like a copy editor said Sean T. Your name can't your last name can't just be a T. He has to have a last name and send it back to the reporter who's just like fine. His it's fucking fitness. last name is Fitness. <laughs> That'd be like if my name was like Kyle E. Sexy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it just states what we already know about you. Oh. Okay, what about, what about him? Anyway, anyway, they're adorable. Yeah. You, um, you just saw the picture there, and um, but it's the first time in the magazine's ninety-three year history that a gay couple has been on the cover. That's awesome. Yeah. So. And did I see Dan show this picture? Were there kids there? Yeah. I mean, it's parent magazine. <laughs> I think they have to be parents. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they don't have to put them on the cover, though. Yeah, well, they're twins and they're adorable. Mm. Um, and then, of course, there's backlash, but I don't want to talk about the backlash because oh, no. I want to be happy. Only front lash. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, well, that's exciting. So shitty things happen, but good things happen, too. The shitty things, unfortunately, are death, fines, and uh, kicked out of your country and the good things are a magazine and pissing off 1 million moms yeah. who are actually 14 women named Brenda <laughs> you know she's miss she always pisses about something um is that that's all it for that's news? all I got for news yeah can we make up a news story like a country was created and they said only gays are welcome and everyone's happy <laughs> Given how many how many conservative people have been like, let's just get an island and put them all there. Yeah. They'll die out. They can't <laughs> procreate. I don't know. If that would be maybe problematic. But yeah. but uh, but fun. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, yeah. Um, should we talk about threesomes? Let's talk about threesomes. Uh, I'm gonna go first though. Oh oh oh. You're gonna hate it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't wait. We were talking about it a little bit before we started recording. Recording. What is a threesome? 
Oh yeah. What does that count? What like what counts? Yeah. Okay. Like I wouldn't have thought the, that we had to I'm define asking this for a really specific reason. I, okay. Go ahead. Uh, th- three people who have sex together. Okay. What <laughs> constitutes sex? Oh jeez. This is why I don't like it because it's like it's just like. It's a three, like it's, it's like porn. That one definition yeah. of porn, like I don't know what I don't know how to define it, but I know it when I see it. Yeah, yeah. Ruth Bader Ginsburg said that. Did she? No. Oh. <laughs> um, you know that that bitch watches porn. <laughs> that's how she broke her rib. Pterodactyl threesome oh, porn. God. Um. Okay. So. Because <laughs> she remembers when pterodactyls were a thing. <laughs> she was alive. <laughs> um. Uh. When three people uh, all get together for sexual satisfaction purposes. Okay. Okay. Is that a little bit? I don't know. Okay. Right? I mean, I guess I, I guess. I don't know. So the reason I'm asking is because uh, I, I have, depending on the definition of threesome, have had either one or four. Boo. Um, and and I uh, I just I guess I want some clarity on how many threesomes have I had, Kyle? <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, it would be beautiful if it was three, <laughs> right? But that'd be too easy, right? But it's like that I'd have to stop. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, no more ever. It's too perfect. <laughs> um, okay, wait. What was the difference between one and four and the other three? Okay, so so um, you're very interested in this. Dan leaned in. <laughs> Dan Cheryl Sandberg and leaned right in. So this is not the open relationships episode, and so that makes it a little bit problematic. And when we have that, when we have that episode, I will talk more in depth about this. Mm-hmm. And Trevor and I, we separated for a year. When he came back, one of the things that we did was opened our relationship. Mm-hmm. And uh, so all of my threesome activity type event stuff that I that I've ever had was <laughs> my in... definition was better than yours. Yeah. <laughs> Three some event stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what happened happened after he came back and mm-hmm. before he left for good, which was a period of about mm, eight or nine months, okay. give, or, give or take. And so when I look through those, the four things that are like on the table. Yeah. Uh, the the first one, I don't think I want you to use his name. Okay. Then just call him. We'll call. Make up a name for him. No, because you or know her. You know, you know who he is. Is why I don't want to use his name. Oh, okay. We'll just. You can still make up a name. All right. It, his name is Frank. <laughs> his name is Frank. Great. So, so uh, it was my birthday. So Trevor had been back for like <laughs> maybe two months, maybe, mm-hmm. and and uh, like he has some. Frank. Frank has some <laughs> like super natural ability like we had told maybe three people that we were opening our relationship a little bit and then at my birthday he was on us like white on rice he's just (laughs) like i heard i heard i I heard i heard you guys (laughs) i heard you guys might be like into it and and so then i mean it was my birthday so i got fucking wasted yay okay the good good start of any threesome (laughs) so then we were all three making out I passed out and they banged next to me in the bed. Oh. Does that count? It started as a threesome but ended as a twosome. <laughs> right. That's why that's why Yeah, okay. It, yeah. Yeah. yeah? It, it, it was and then it wasn't. I yeah. <laughs> It's a Schrodinger's threesome. <laughs> <laughs> when you open the door, who knows what state you'll find them all in. Um, Washington. We were in Washington. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it annoying? The thing I didn't know when moving to Seattle is that you would always have to clarify Washington State. Right. I ne- Yeah. Because everyone assumes it's DC. I blame the Associated Press. I blame Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. Wait, what's the Associated Press have to do with it? Oh, because it's AP rules that if you use the word Washington alone in a sentence, it always refers to the city. Uh, and so newspaper articles will always say Washington, Washington. State to refer uh, to the state. And stupid. I blame... Stupid. Yeah. Fuck those guys. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, I, I I think you... So it'd be the same as like, you started... It's like a... Yeah, kind of a threesome. Because you all started doing sexual stuff together with the intent of. No, you did. I mean, you did. It started as a threesome. 
and then continued on as a twosome. Okay, so you have so you have a you have sort of a low barred entry for the term threesome. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty fair. That's can that be my nickname? Yeah, low barred entry. <laughs> low barred entry gets. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. Great. So then, all four, all four count as three. Wait, did that, that happen that three ruled. times? Three times to That's no. Okay. So wait, what were the other ones that you don't know whether they should count? So the one that I know for sure counts. So it's the answer is definitely one. Was all of the dicks went in all of the butts? So, so like <laughs> with a with. <laughs> Wow. Like that's uh, okay. Even for a threesome, I don't often have one where like <laughs> did literally every combination you were like, okay, we have ABC. So we need A and B, then A and C, then like, it's a good, that's some... a good question. That's a good question. This is a good math question for eighth grade. <laughs> I believe that combinatorially there would be six potential combinations there. Combinatorily can't be a word. Three, three factorial is, is, uh, <laughs> is, is six. Is, so there's six, there's six, but, potential yeah so uh we're gonna call him ted because so there's there's trevor and ted there's trevor and me mm -hmm. there's me and ted and then there's the reverse of all of those yeah. six okay but did you actually do all those i think so oh wow that's like a pretty pretty um like you were like this was not a like enjoyment threesome. This was like, all right, team. We have, we have a list to check off. <laughs> here's here's what we got going on. No dilly dallying. Once you get in there, a couple thrusts and you're out. Yeah, yeah. We got things to do. People yeah. to do. Um, okay, sorry. So that was the real one, or yeah. the one you're sure, not the real one. The one you're sure about. Just unambiguously, yeah. that is a threesome. Yep. yep. Like that. Yes. Tell that me happened. about the other two then that are still possibilities. Uh, okay. One of them um, was uh, uh, I don't want to use his name either. His name is great. That doesn't. That's that's his last name. <laughs> For simplicity, let's call him Frank. Okay, Frank. This time, Frank, a different Frank. Um. So, all I did was rim Trevor and then watch them fuck. Hmm. Okay. I'm getting two thumbs up from Dan. Oh, <laughs> that did... that counts. I mean, yeah. Okay. I mean, that's like minimal, like. It was just just my mouth for a little bit, and then voyeuristic. Yeah, right? I mean you're involved. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we, so two. Okay, well <laughs> let's go. Let's go the extreme. Do you think two people fucking while another person's watching is a threesome? I don't. Part of me thinks not. I, hmm. I, I think that just like like a voyeurism exhibitionism activity isn't necessarily a threesome like even if everybody knows what's going on if somebody's fucking in the hallway across the street here and i'm watching them we are not in a threesome no but like that's but in also... the same room that somehow changes it yeah because and like the other people are aware of it <laughs> like <laughs> they don't know that there's a third person watching okay so that so doesn't make it hy hypothetical i call them ring ring hey you guys i want you to fuck and i'm gonna watch you and then they do is that a threesome they're across the street why did we start with a... Can we start within the room? Because that's the more realistic one than your crazy scenario. No, all I'm saying is that I don't understand why watching people have sex with no physical interaction with them whatsoever, how their location relative to you changes the threesomeness or non-threesomeness of that scenario. I think, one... You're a ridiculous human being. <laughs> yes. This is yeah. the oddest conversation. I love it so much. About it's very annoying. But two It's on brand for me. I think I... like you just like if you if there are three people and like one person's jerking off and watching the other two, you all three got together for sex stuff and excitement and yeah, I I would count that. All right. Okay. I don't know about if you like are a peeping Tom across the hallway. You can do that on your own time, but well, yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 I mean, I, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Yo, yeah. Own, owning a telescope does not a threesome make. <laughs> Depends on where you put the telescope. Yeah. <laughs> um, is that, <laughs> okay. I don't, I, did we come, did we arrive at a working definition I don't, of threesome then? Uh, uh, three people that all come to come together. <laughs> <laughs> for the intent of sexual gratification. Okay. Whether it's achieved or not. Yeah. 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 Cause I think sex, you don't have to orgasm to, for it to be sex. So yeah. So what if Trevor and Frank had both passed out and all three of us passed out? Would that be a threesome? Where, at what point in the process? 
Like after the making out. No, then just three of you made out. But then what if we woke up cuddling? Because that happened. No. Okay. Cuddling is not... I don't know. I'm looking like I, I'm, I'm a, would you say cut? Okay. You're just being difficult now. Would you say cuddling with two other people is a threesome? I think it could be highly intimate. Okay. That's not the question. You're being stupid and difficult. <laughs> Does somebody have to have an orgasm? I guess is no, what I'm getting at. I don't think so. So, so you can do, you can do all kinds of things. We don't know what that list of things is. And it doesn't it's matter more than cuddling and less than orgasming. Yeah. The in between stuff. Okay. All right, but okay, but you you are at least willing to admit that cuddling with two other people is not a threesome. I want to make you say <laughs> I want to make you say it because you're trying to avoid saying it because <laughs> you're trying to be devil's advocate. Uh, well, actually, what, what's going through my head right now is I have to say that cuddling is not a threesome because then I there would definitely be more than four items on my list Ooh. of potential threesomes. You so, do a lot of uh, uh, enjoyable cuddling in threes. I, I've been in, in more than one cuddle puddle and thoroughly enjoyed myself. Cuddle yes. puddle, so cute. <laughs> I love it. Okay, but I'm going to force you have to say yes or no. Cuddling with two other people, is that a threesome? No. Okay, thank you. That's all I wanted <laughs> so from you, hard. Mike. That's all I wanted. How hard was it? <laughs> um, I, yeah, I think like, because I've actually had... I mean, I would consider it a threesome because I was talking to this couple um, and they wanted me to come over. Oh, no, they both fucked me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, God. I retract the example. Okay. That's fantastic. <laughs> Fuck, that's amazing. I, I, well, I forgot because then, like, <laughs> the other guy, like, sat and watched and he, but he, like, came again while he was jerking off. Oh, Okay. Because Kyle is e sexy. Uh, you know what? What? If I could just be invited to jerk off while other people were fucking, I would do that every day. You can do that. How do you? I can't even get people to like just have random sex with me, much less like anything specific. People so... love people watching them. Okay, <sighs> this is. I didn't write this down, but like cuckolding is like a big thing that uh, I feel like it's taken off. I feel like it's. <laughs> it's like some branding firm got a hold of it and was like we're gonna make this shit happen because it's like but doesn't that mean that unless i'm the cuck which don't you have to have a massive penis to be the cuck like the, the, the no. cuck old i mean no we need to, okay we'll just do a whole episode about this all i'm saying is that would mean <laughs> that i need to have a significant other that i can then have people fucking watch and i like, feel like the definition that's... of cuckolding is expanded to just well me i don't know yeah you're right it's mostly like in a relationship with another person coming over fucking them all right but i yeah. think you i think you would be some form of that i think you could find that our hotline is 5855 gay <laughs> or just like on scruff or whatever <clears throat> um okay <laughs> are we going into can we do the next thing then because right, we... right. i think we all we've done is definitions <laughs> And I don't think we really talked about that. Favorite episode so far. I, I don't just... know. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to, you're not going to like my segment. Three sums. That's how I go in prepared. <laughs> most of the time. Mentally prepare yourself for. Okay. Three sums. I'll give a few examples. Okay. Two and one. Two. Zero and three. Negative 40 and 43. All of those. Are we just it's doing algebra th now? Three sum. It's the sum is three. Okay. <laughs> All right. I could. Should I keep listing? Four and negative one. <laughs> <laughs> one and two again. No. Done with this. Okay. I'll tell you. I'll tell you more numbers. You're. Acting as if that was not hilarious. <laughs> so I don't know how to read that because it was. Okay. So at first when you were going into that, I was like, okay, this is like, okay, yeah, two and one. That that is like either that's that's two two chicks and one dude, or oh. that's like like the num like that's dicks in holes, or that's like <laughs> he's going somewhere with this. And then it was zero and three, and I was like, oh, okay, that's like you know. <laughs> All chicks are all dudes. Oh. I get where he's going with this. And then you said negative 40. And I was like, what the fuck is a negative person? Yep. That's why I had to throw that one in there. That's not in the Constitution anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, boy. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> um, okay. 
the number of the numbers I actually have are people who have had sex. Every Wait, single hold on. one of them. Hold on. I feel like I might need to clarify. People who have had a threesome. Okay. Good thing we all now clearly know what a threesome is. <laughs> Our very clear definitions have cleared that right up. Okay. Hopefully that matches what this study did. I don't. Um, so Where does this number come from, Kyle? Datingadvice.com. That sounds reputable. They, I couldn't really <laughs> find numbers on like who has actually had like threesomes. So like Dating Advice did an uh, online survey of 100 and, 1,080 people, and they used like they got the right number to match the U.S. population. Got so, it. I mean, as good as a study might be. What's the margin of error? Oh, I actually read this. It's like plus or minus two point something, less than 3%. That's decent. Fuck yeah! <laughs> okay. Um, 11% of straight women have had a threesome. Okay. Uh, how many straight men, Mike? 15%. 26%. Wow. Okay. And, liars, okay. liars, liars. But I was just going to say, <laughs> how many of them are like, yeah, I had a threesome. Ugh. But like... Why would you show That's off? That's a straight guy sound, by the way. <laughs> what? Threesome? Yeah. Yeah, fuck that, yeah, bro. Oh. <laughs> Can we do an entire episode like with our straight alter egos talking? Yeah. Yeah, it's like gay or whatever, bro. <laughs> um, now, well, why, what incentive th would they have to lie to datingadvice.com? Like, they don't give a shit what they think. Like, you think they would... Mm. They might round up. Like, they might be like, oh, I'm Mike filling it out. Four. Definitely Four. Yeah, that's true. They might right. round them that, up. But, that that like, checks out. <laughs> um, but I mean, like, literally every single, if that's your concern, like, every single study ever can, you know, have that potential flaw if people lie about stuff. Yeah, well, for sure. For sure. I mean, so, not really. You can so, find uh, tricks. Yeah, but... if, it, if it's self-reported instead of, uh, you know, uh, objectively measured by science. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's why you're a voyeur. You yeah. just want to objectively measure. <laughs> yeah. That's like this 10 inch dick thing. I just, I just, I really, <laughs> nothing, like people have sent in photos and like tried to argue with me about it. And I just, I just really need, I just, I guess I just need to like, like, like hold one. Hold. <laughs> <laughs> and get my tape measure. Yeah. Hold it right inside your sphincter. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Then it didn't break down the difference between gay and lesbians. Like, so that's all one group. Okay. How many of gay and lesbian people have had a threesome? 20. Total? <laughs> 20 people. 20 people? That's it. <laughs> Uh, uh, I bet I know 20 people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, in fact, hold on. Mm -hmm. Opposite. How many gay people in my life, they're all gay men that I'm thinking of because I, I have gay female friends, but I don't know their sexual histories because you. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, my, my gay male friends, I can't think of one of them that hasn't had a threesome that I've talked to them about. I'm thinking. I think all of them. Hmm. 100% of yours. Uh, okay, so... 88% is my answer. Uh, 51%. Which is uh, uh, Greek for 50. No, <laughs> Greek for 88. <laughs> okay, it's like, why does... Um, yeah, so... I mean, one thing that I noticed from that is the assumption straight men always, I feel like, are trying to keep up with their other straight bros and, like, you know, try to force themselves to have threesomes and, like, actually the majority of people are of straight men have not had threesomes. So like you don't have to try to keep up with alternate theory. Uh -huh. What percentage was it for straight guys? Uh, 26, 26. What's 26 times two 52 because when two gay guys hook up, it's two dudes. Hmm. I don't get, I feel like you did something that I don't understand. Math. Bam. <laughs> what? <laughs> What, explain this again to me, slower and better. Let's say that there are 10 dudes. Uh -huh. They are straight. Uh huh. 2.6 of them have had a threesome uh -huh. with women. Uh huh. If 2.6 of them have a threesome with 2.6 other men because they're men, uh -huh. that would be 52% of them you think would have been in a threesome. You think straight men are out there having threesomes with gay men? No. Woo! All I'm saying is that Th all I'm saying is that, that percentage goes up twice as fast as it does for straight guys because everybody involved is a man. Uh, well, wouldn't, shouldn't it go up three times as much? Yeah. 
<laughs> Oddly convoluted episode no, 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 of no, no, numbers. No. So this started as a joke, and then and then now, and now then you're really it, digging no, into it because it, it wasn't funny. So <laughs> then I just like, I'm really committing to it. <laughs> Gay. It started as a joke that wasn't funny, so we committed. Ha uh-huh. ha. 104 episodes. Uh-huh. Jokes on you. <laughs> you listened to it. Uh-huh. This was all a joke. Dirty bitches. <laughs> Um, that was the end of my segment. Oh, okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Do you believe those numbers? Do they seem like, you know... Um, yeah, I really wish they divided out gay and lesbians. <laughs> like, that's, like, such a big, like, thing to not do, so... Yeah. I don't know. But, yeah, I think so. I want to talk about the fact that if it's 26% of straight men and 11% of straight women, those 11% of straight women are getting it on. Good for them. They're right. like, I know I'm like a minority so that's actually something uh some dude said like later is that like the assumption is that women that participate in threesomes are like in porn they're all like degraded and like treated as an object but in actuality some women not all some women who have threesomes actually are more in control of their sexuality and uh are willing to because they know what they want they're willing they know when to say no so like they actually have more agency so that 11 percent rocking it dick could, style could it also suggest the devil's three ways are the norm because the if we're it's three people being counted so i'll talk a, a two to one ratio of men to women suggests devil's three way i'll talk a little bit about that in a second Doesn't it? i guess it could it could yeah. it, it that's interesting you can cut all this obviously i'm just I, math intrigues me yeah no it, it it could i'm i'm my my uh my supposition is flawed um there could be lots of ways that it would sorry yeah there could be lots of ways that this the math works out yeah yeah my presumption is if you're straight enough to say that you're straight and then talk about your three ways that you're not involved in devil's three ways but what's put a, a butt plug in that okay butt plug yep great what do you got well kyle gets y'all Listen to this. Come and knock on our door. Come and knock on our door. We've been waiting for you. We've been waiting for you. Where the kisses are hers and hers and his. Three's company too. Come and dance on our floor. Come and dance on our floor. Take a step that is new. Take a step that is new. Space that okay, I'll fade that out. That's the theme song from Three's Company. What yeah. do you remember about Three's Company? There's three of them. There are three of them. Uh, a dude and two ladies. A dude and two ladies. One is brunette and the other is stupid. The ladies, yes. I think the stupid one is blonde. And the stupid one was the dude. But <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, and they all live together? They all live together, they yes. They had a couch? I mean, yeah, you got three camera format with a with a with a couch, yeah. Uh, does one of theirs name name Diane? Uh, no. Was there hijinks that involved misunderstandings? Yes, <laughs> yes, there absolutely was. Yeah, no, that's I don't know any. I don't think I've ever seen an episode about it. You like, did really, really well. It was on. Did I? <laughs> it was on ABC for eight seasons from March of 1977 to September of 1984. And um, so it, it was based on a British sitcom, but it, it revolves around three single roommates, um, Janet, Chrissy, and Jack. And they all platonically live together in Santa Monica, California, in this apartment. And uh, the, the, thing, the two things that I wanted to talk about on this episode about were yeah, escapades, hijinks, blah, blah, <laughs> blah. Um, but at the time, there was enough... Uh, so, let me back up. The landlord was an old dude, Mr. Roper, and he and his wife. Well, I've heard that name. Did they have a spinoff? Yes, the Ropers. Was it yes. called the? Oh, the that's Ro- what it was called. The, the Ropers. Oh. Um, uh, so so they they ran the joint, and there was this sort of tension about what do you mean a dude is living with two single ladies in this apartment? That's not okay. Mm-hmm. So they lied to him and said that Jack is gay. So the whole premise of the show, at oh. least initially, was built around this idea that uh, it's okay for this dude to live with these two chicks because he's gay. I didn't know that 
being gay was prominently part of this show? Me neither. Because <laughs> I was alive for most of that time period and I've seen the show lots of times, but I I did not I did not remember that hmm. because kids don't pay attention to those kinds of things. Yeah. Um also mm-hmm. Mrs. Roper figures out that he's gay or sorry, figures out that he's actually straight mm-hmm. and then doesn't tell her husband because she likes picking on him. And that's like rude. her husband or Jack. No, uh, no, no. Mr. Mr. Roper, Mrs. Roper figures out that Jack is actually straight and doesn't tell Mr. Roper because uh, she likes him looking like a dumbass. Oh. And like his sort of hapless, I don't really know what's going on. Um, like stupidity about things is drives a lot of the comedy. Hmm. Um, couples just it's so funny watching old, old shows and seeing how couples were portrayed and it's like it's always like a dumb husband and they like don't they always argue and they don't seem to really like each other that much but they're <laughs> just kind of there yeah. like divorce might be a lot like not allowed yet and so hilarious to me it, it, it directly confirming what you just talked about uh mr roper was the one that would pretend that he had a headache so that he didn't have to bang Mrs. Roper. <laughs> like he would, he would often say not, not, not tonight, Helen, I've got a headache. Yeah. Um, I think Helen was her name. I can't find that anyway. Um, so, so the other thing that I want to talk about, not only is this, this character, it's problematic, right. To, to, to say, to say that that's not gay representation, mm, but the right, fact right. that that subject was being broached on television at all. Yeah as uh, as something that a character would willingly adopt yeah. as, as a as a as a, a, a ruse I, I think is interesting and all, and like not a i mean it's still like not great because it's like using gayness for your own gains and that's but like it wasn't being used to like sleep with a girl <clears throat> which like that's like the worst of it like oh i'm gay but i want to try out sex once and it's like <laughs> right you know so. right right it's right. like medium problematic yeah which or would be way more problematic now. Yeah, that's true. Like, I think that there's definitely, you have to give shows kind of wide berth in historical context, right? Like, like, I will not wide <laughs> berth a show. <laughs> it's disgusting. Um, you know, Suzanne Summers got her start on that show. Oh, yeah, she, she's the blonde one. Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> Nailed it. Yep. Yep. Uh, but the other thing I wanted to talk about, I guess, is uh, so he's not gay. It's a straight dude and two single straight chicks living together. Mm-hmm. They were fucking right. <laughs> okay, this is where I mean, see, like this is another thing that's like can't. I mean, it go, like gay friends can gay people be friends and not hook up first or hook up. It's the same thing for straight people. Cons- I don't know. Finish your drink, Kyle. Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> what you put it in um uh but i think i know i mean they don't have to be i think that's like the um and if like was he trying to sleep with him so i do think so like there there was a lot of like sexual tension driving comedy but uh the the actual like behavior and stated desires of the characters were such that no, they weren't fucking. Yeah. And... Which I think that's like another thing that's like a way that men are always, that this is weird. Men are always sexualized. That's not what I mean. Cause it's women, but like men are assumed to always want sex. So if they don't want sex with their straight female roommates, then they must be gay or have yeah. issues. And that's like another, like, I think they sh- you, you should be able to have platonic friends of any and all genders. Yeah. And, it's cool. It doesn't mean you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Helen Roper, Mrs. Roper, mm-hmm. was the sexual aggressor in <laughs> their relationship, and that's that's really interesting. That's another thing that that show flipped the script on. Yeah, that, that this it was this this the 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 man landlord was trying to escape his wife's sexual needs, like a yeah. Venus flytrap or like. <laughs> what's wrong with me <laughs> um yeah that is really interesting to like yeah i like that anyway two's company three's a crowd isn't that the saying that's and that's the point that's... three's company four is better Wait, <laughs> or what <laughs> i think that's we it we should write a show called four is better 
<laughs> I, I'd watch it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, t- uh, two two's company, two is company, three's a crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the name of the show was Three's Company, oh. as a as a sort of they did it ta da take yeah. on on that on that phrase. Um, and uh, that I'm I'm done. I guess I don't have any more to say. Great, 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 great. All right. Uh, the time is 8.45 p.m. <laughs> Let's take a look at traffic. <laughs> I, I, I don't... <laughs> We're up here in the helicopter, and I just realized I don't know how to fly a helicopter. Back to you. Okay, so I'm going to tell you about Dr. Ryan Scotes, Ph.D. Dr. Ryan Scotes? Yeah. Scotes? Yeah. Don't let his last name fool you. He did get a PhD in threesomes. Totes Muscote. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Okay. He has an undergrad and master's from University of Bath. Bath? He is that... in the UK. Yeah. I guess. Australia? Bath. No. This is UK. He's U- UK. He's UK-ish. He's, U- He's UK. He's a UK-ite. Um, <laughs> and he got... A, <laughs> according to him, he thinks he's the first person, and I would consider agreeing with him. First PhD in threesomes, great. Which I mean, like the thing, like on his like bio is sociology, but he like studied specifically threesomes at the University of Winchester in two thousand. He graduated in two thousand nine, and the University of Winchester. Thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna say this, and then you're gonna reread it all in British, <laughs> and it's gonna be great. Um. So there are a lot of things he talks about with threesomes, and I'm going to just tell you some of the interesting things that I've found. Um, okay. So first of all, he talks about a lot of the stereotypes around threesomes that aren't necessarily true. Things like um, if you're a woman and you have a threesome, you're a slut. We find lots of fun ways to call women sluts, and this is just same, same, same. Uh, straight men that have uh, threesomes where another man is involved are in denial about their sexuality. They're just gay and don't want to admit it. Okay. I think it's problematic. I, I, yeah. I think that there's a, there's a, there's a pretty strong thread and I don't think it's just gay wishful thinking of like two, two bros spit roasting a chick and high fiving. But like, I think that there's a, there's a cultural thread there that makes it possible for two men to be in a three way with another girl and have it not be about gayness. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. you got to follow the golden rule, which you're going to talk about. I think. Oh no, no. The golden rule. Um, it's okay to be in a devil's three way. If you <laughs> don't make eye contact and you can high five. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> and you pee on her. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the golden shower rule. Um, uh, and then another one is that if a couple does it, they'll ruin their relationship. Um, so his findings through the research are that, um, now this goes into the two dudes, one lady, um, young, young people now in general, like their sexual orientation is a lot more fluid and they're not as what (laughs) fluid. There's a lot more fluid. (laughs) There's a lot more fluid in their orientation. Um, and that they are, um, I specifically read this, like he was talking about, um, you know, there's this rule of one gay act means you're gay and they are not the type of people that see that like as it, that like one act does not define your sexual orientation. Sure. Um, Thank so, God. I know. Right. You should try all the things and figure out what you like and don't like. And if that, if like kids these days are down with that, good for you kids these days. I know they're so smart. They're like guns hurt <laughs> and sex with stuff is cool. Yep. Um, if anybody wants to try banging a 40 year old, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So many young men now find that male, male, female, MMF. That sounds like a fight. Not to be confused with MMA. <laughs> okay. That's why it sounded like that. Male, male, female threesomes are normal or even more normal than uh, female, female, male threesomes. Uh, as in, as in like frequent they're more, in, they're like, like, view them as being more normal. So like... But kids these days? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Young men find them to be more than norm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think frequency, like, happening more often um, 
and like when you think of what is a threesome like that would be more likely to be what they're considering um partly it just said because they're easier to find (laughs) (laughs) um three quarters of straight men were open to a threesome involving another male wow this i mean i'm guessing this is uk though um because and UK below a certain age or just like the UK. This didn't like this was more just generally talking about his findings. It wasn't from one specific okay. study. He's okay. done a bunch of research on threesomes. Given he's a PhD in threesomes, <laughs> new career path. I know new goal. <clears throat> Second person to be. Um, oh, this is uh, part of what he found is this is the same dude that I was saying like porn with women involved is about degrading them, but. They can actually have a lot of agency and control. Um, so he's the one that gave me that information. Um, and then this is something I included for you, Aww. Michael Johnson. Boom. Get a PhD in foursomes. It's one better. Mm. Hey, Ryan Scotes. <laughs> Fuck off. You're running scared now, Scotes. <laughs> yeah. Scout away from us. Scout on out of here. <laughs> okay. Um, he said that... Um, the one of the downsides so those are like good things about threesomes in general like people getting more accepting of them and they're not about like de- degradation they're about owning your sexuality then on the downside is there's more peer pressure um to have a threesome there is um yeah like the more open people become to that then the more people will be like oh you have to try it or you'll you'll always regret it like oh yeah more like so he said there's only one i see what this has to do with me now <laughs> <laughs> he says there's only one good reason for doing anything sexual and that's because you want to if you don't want to or you're not sure if you want to then don't do it oh scotes Scoats my goats. Scoats. <laughs> Thank and, you. Yeah. Your your PhD is coming in handy for once. <laughs> this is what I, by the way, what I've been telling you the whole time. But if you need to hear from a PhD, then fine. Yeah. Um. So if you, it helps, by the way, it does. Mm-hmm. Does it? Mm-hmm. He scoted his way into my heart. <laughs> Um, so if you want to, he's like, has a surprisingly small number of Twitter followers given he's a PhD in threesomes. Okay. So What's his ch- handle? Check him out on R Scotes. So at R S C O A T S. Oh, it's like R S and then Coates. R S Coates. R S Coates. I'm changing his name. It should be R S Coates. Cause that's way easier to say. Is there an E S? Nope. No E S, just S. Just S. R S Coats. You do know how to spell Coats, then. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Why? Thank you. I, just, <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> that condescending compliment. Yep. yep. <laughs> uh, you want to talk about more? Sure. I lied to you about how many segments. Oh, I have. great. Okay. I'm just like scratching the surface. I, who knew we had so much to talk about with threesomes? Great. You can cut this. I just I went to his website and I'm looking at the names of his journal articles. Yeah. And they're amazing. Yeah. They're... <laughs> Read some. Read yeah. some. Uh, they get better over time. Uh, I bet threesomes do too. <laughs> 2018, it sort of peaks with uh, the journal article. I don't mind watching him come heterosexual men threesomes and the erosion of the one time <laughs> rule of homosexuality. Uh, that was in uh, sexualities. Uh, that's the name of the journal. Uh, in Culture, Health, and Sexuality, he had an article called My Partner Was Just All Over Her, <laughs> Jealousy, Communication, and Rules in Mixed Sex Threesomes. And then, my very favorite, in Psychology and Sexuality, If There Is No Homo, There Is No Trio, Women's Experiences <laughs> and Expectations of MMF Threesomes. Wow. Yeah. We're so vital. I would like want... to talk to you about the app. <laughs> if you were to make an app and its sole purpose was threesomes, what would you name it? Um, I would name it uh, one less than four. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, so I want to talk to you about the app Threender. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like mine better. <laughs> Threender, sadly, no longer exists. Oh, well now where do you find your threesomes on every other app? Hold please. <laughs> okay. Threender turned into the app Field. 
F E E L D. Hmm. Yeah. Like, man, I want two people to field me up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> great. <laughs> exactly. I mean, like, Thuringer obviously is pretty great. Yeah. Um, it's it was it was an app. Sole purpose was to facilitate threesomes, mm-hmm. and uh, they had the shit suit out of them by Tinder. Oh, because of the name? <laughs> that's because that of seems the name. Pretty fair, actually. Yep. Um, and so it's it's really interesting to me. Uh, when Threender became Field, they kept their logo, which a lot of people said just looks like dicks. Oh, it does kind of look like dicks. It looks like three dicks. It also, which is beautiful. It also looks like the Airbnb logo, <laughs> which now just looks like dicks to me. Ooh, so, maybe that's what Airbnb is for too. Everybody, look at Airbnb, look at their logo, <laughs> and think dicks because <laughs> you can't unsee it once you've seen it. Anyway, um, so uh, Tinder sued Threender. Threender became feel <laughs> field field, and uh, I I thought. <laughs> One of my favorite things about this whole deal uh, was was that in order to try to save themselves, I don't know why they thought that this would help. The founder, uh, Dimo Trifonov, um, launched a campaign titled "Tinder Sucks My Socks," <laughs> in which it he encouraged Threender users to send their dirty socks to Tinder headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> Why was that going to help? Like, oh, all these fucking nasty ass socks. Lawsuit canceled. You're right. You <laughs> yeah, win. I don't know. That doesn't help him promote his thing. It just gets them to also wait. Was what was his last name? Tree Tree Finoff. I mean, it's kind of funny that his name starts with tree. <laughs> That's I true. mean, do you want one or two? No, I want tree. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, what's interesting, so this article lists a whole bunch of other apps that were dating apps that have a endure at the end. Oh. And I wonder, like, a lot of them still exist. And I wonder how they escaped this fate. Grindr, well, I mean, Tinder could have, if if the endure is the problem, they could have been, like, Grinder could have been like, no, no, we had it first. And then, I mean, like, Kindergarten could have been like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddies. Oh. Because German. Because German. Yeah. Um, no, it, so Grinder, Blender, Binder, Bristler. These were all apparently dating apps. Who knows how many of them actually still exist? Uh, because, the, you know, this was a, a couple of years ago. If you had to guess, I found this very surprising. Okay. How many users do you think Threender slash Field had, at least at the time of this article, which was uh, 2016? So. <laughs> It had four people, three happy people, and one real sad person. <laughs> <laughs> they won't respond to my three. Like, Wait, <laughs> my three. I three requested you, but um, I don't know. Like, wait, how? Um, there's, uh, I would say, fifty thousand. There were one point five million people Woo! on Threender. Everybody wants a threesome. Apparently so. Um, and uh, they said that they had 78,000 people on a waiting list for the Android version because it was only offered on iPhone. <laughs> um, oh, that well, that is kind of nice. You know you're getting people that are compatible with your plug because, <laughs> like, when you have a threesome and your phone's about to die, you do want to make, you know, it is really <laughs> it's true. It's very comforting. It's true. Where does this go? <laughs> <laughs> Can I plug this in anywhere? Yeah. My vagina. Yeah. Let me talk to you about how much voltage I need. <laughs> um, so, so uh, Threender actually was a love letter to his girlfriend. She opened up to him about the shame she felt for having feelings for other people and for women in particular. Quote, when I found out I wasn't angry with her, I was angry that she felt bad about it. So I made a nap. <laughs> the app was a way to show her that there are many people like her and like me. A couple that wants to expand their relationship beyond monogamy. And like letters, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I, have, I have some suggestions for him. A nice uh, flowers. Ladies love that shit. Yeah. Open mouth kisses. There's so many <laughs> options to show her that she, that he's fine with it. I wonder if I wonder if she she was just like. I wanted to ring you fuck and walked out. <laughs> <laughs> I made mean, three dirt for you. We're get, done. We're d- <laughs> That's so, I mean, it'd be like if I made an app for Cheez-Its. I love them and they are not in my life enough. And I want to apologize. 
<laughs> and tell them I still love them. <laughs> and just be called like Cheeser. Cheeser? Ew, that sounds like something else that's dirty. <laughs> it's either for men who want cheese its or women who want to get cheesed on. Hey, have we ever said the word smegma on this podcast <laughs> I don't, before? I don't think so. We just did. Are you going <laughs> Are you going for gayish first? <laughs> Maybe. You know. I think we should yeah. Okay. Um, um so uh, this article talking about three hundred uh slash field um uh said that gen z so the generation after gen x uh, after millennials um uh, sorry gen z is after millennials because mm-hmm. millennials are also gen y yeah. um that they are less tethered to gender binaries than millennials are that they're rejecting gender norms and the term gender fluidity is increasingly pushing into the public lexicon and that they, a lot of their users were super young hmm. and they're just down to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, I th- I, yeah. Okay. That, that's cool that that's like coming up consistently of like young people are pushing back against binaries of all sorts. And yeah, and just, I was, there was something else. I forget what I was reading about. Like sex positivity does not mean slut. Sex positivity means regardless of your own beliefs, supporting any kind of healthy consensual sex. Um, but it also so... means slut because you're getting more than me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, I mean, who isn't? Yeah. Um... <laughs> I have had zero sex in 2019. Oh. God damn. Well, this Great. wine bottle's sitting right by you. Uh, well, no. You can... I, I... Myself and me have gotten busy. Okay, okay. <laughs> The best reason of all, me, myself, and I. Um, Threender. Threender. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, field. Yeah, right. Right. Um, did we... We have we talked a little bit about our threesome experiences. Maybe we should yeah. talk about, like, our advice. Our threesome advice. Our threesome advice. Yep. Do you, do you want to go... Do you, well, do you want to do your segment first? Oh, and then, and then we still have one for. And then do we yes, st- okay, yes, even great. after that. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to point out. So, uh, the a lot of people think that a term for a threesome is menage a trois <gasps> that gets thrown out there. And it, oh my god, what? Nothing. Keep going. Wait. There's. The, I have something that is referencing this. Okay. That I was going to save for Patreon. Oh, is it that it's it's not? Kind of. That it actually means that that means thruple. Oh Men- no, I didn't know. I had something. I had it means something else. Menage- Way less exciting. Menage à trois is French for household of three. <gasps> oh, but couldn't they just be living there together it as friends? It is a specifically domestic arrangement in which three people have hmm. romantic or sexual relations with each other, typically occupying the same household, and is distinctly different from a thruple. And uh. Um, which I had never heard of thruple until you told me about it. So like, that's just like three people in a relationship with them. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. Each of them. But, but strictly speaking, if you say, yeah, I, I, I was in a menage a trois this weekend. That's, that's a misuse of the term. And like any term, like usage should rule any, any practical linguist would tell you that however people are using the word is the correct way to use it. So you're speaking etymologically. Etymolo- Yes, exactly that. <laughs> um, but, I have I have more on this that's going to be in our Patreon, and it's uh, Katy Perry's involved. Fantastic, <laughs> great, great. Okay, well we okay we th- we have not clarified because there are a lot of these different things. Like I'm I'm I won't use menage a trois, but like threesome. Uh, but then there's also a thruple or a there's an open relationship. There's polyamory, so. Mike, what what's the difference between all those things? Uh, they're all having more sex than you. <laughs> they're all having more sex than me. Um, so there is, so there's a couple of axes going on here. Oh One boy! One is who are you in a relationship with versus who are you fucking? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then there are uh, different arrangements of those things so if you are in an open relationship that means that you probably have your one person that is your primary from a relationship standpoint but you are open to banging whoever 
although that's not always the case. There's multiple variations of open relationship, which we will get into in that episode when it happens. Uh, a What else did you say? Polyamory. Oh, yeah. Polyamory is the state in which multiple people are involved in a relationship together. So um, it's different than a threesome because a threesome could be like a one-time thing and everyone or no one can be involved whereas like a polyamorous relationships it's not about the sex it's about like the relationship that you're in well the linguistic roots of polyamory oh are amory amorous meaning to love and poly is many so it's to be in love with many people at the same time it has nothing to do with sex it has to do with the relationship with so you could have you could fuck the same two people every day and that would just be multiple threesomes not polyamory mm -hmm. then when they both move in now you're in a polyamorous relationship Assuming you don't hate each other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't hate each other and plan to introduce each other to your in-laws. Yes. Wait. Your parents? I guess they're not in-laws unless you're married. Oh, um, God, can you imagine having twice as many in-laws or oh three times as many in-laws? Hopefully they're all dead. God. Um, did we did we explain it or confuse it more? Yes. There's like relationship. Gayish. And then <laughs> there's relationship and then there's sex. Relationships can involve many people. That's polyamory or thruple is three. There's sex, which can be, that's open relationship is one way to define like what kind of sex you're having or there's monogamous and then there's threesomes. Yeah. It's also like there's different kinds of open relationships and lots of open relationships. You can't just fuck whoever you want to, but the two of us can have a third come visit whenever and, and we'll fuck the shit out of them and they'll go home. Yes. And required <laughs> is fucking the shit out of them. It's part of the definition. Mm -hmm. Um, what is that what you wanted out of the segment? <laughs> I, I mean, the more times we can say fuck the shit out of yeah. the more, the more downloads we get. So yes, we already said spit roast and smegma in this episode. So all topping are off. the charts, all gl <laughs> wear gloves, oh, wear protection kids, but don't do it, but don't do it, <laughs> but do it feels so much better. Take your prep, take your prep, prep with your prep, prep with your butt. And... You should probably invest in a vial of penicillin. <laughs> Um, okay, what are what's some advice about threesomes? Um, let's see. My go-to is being like the the unattached one, being the one that joins in with like couples or even like randos, whatever you want. But like that's like that's most of my threesome experience. It's so great. You just mm. like you don't have to deal with any. You can just like be there for what you want to do, which is butt fucking mm -hmm. and then you can get out of there and it's like great <laughs> i did it like i'm done and then you're done with it you don't have to worry about it you don't have to like you know when it's in a relationship you have to think and talk and but when you're the just the random but when you're the like the the like individual just coming and going and coming it's and coming and going <laughs> or whatever you want coming it's and coming and going <laughs> it's, it's really nice yeah yeah so that's my advice uh i would also say that uh you should if you are a couple and you are invited in a third person along you should communicate up front with each other about what your expectations are because i have heard and experienced a little bit i have heard um uh, of big jealousy issues coming mm -hmm. up because one or the other partner was paying more attention to the new person that was involved or the new person was only paying attention to one of the people in the couple and they had feelings about that. Mm -hmm. So this idea of, of just talking through what are your expectations of this person when, when they're here, are we still, are we supposed to be making eye contact with each other? Mm -hmm. Is this, uh, how involved are we going to be with each other while this other person is here? I, I think that that's important because it can go, it can go badly. People can have feelings that they weren't prepared for that you need to, um, try to try to get in front of that as, as much as you can. Yeah. Also helpful getting in front of that as much <laughs> as you can. Um, yeah, I think, I do think like, yeah, communication up front is definitely important. And then also being willing to, like maybe there are feelings that come out of that. Like I think if you're going to try it, especially in a couple saying we're going to do this once and then we're not going to do it anymore. Like, uh, and then we're going to talk about it. 
like being open to, oh, wow, I didn't like that, even though I thought I would, or here's what I liked and didn't like, or I was jealous and I didn't know, like being open to those kind of feelings and then reevaluating is really helpful because you may think you're the kind of cool, chill, the cool mom fuck them in yeah the cool mom that has a dick and fucks dudes <laughs> like <laughs> but you may not you know you may actually ter- become jealous when you didn't think you would yeah 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 um yeah and like okay so the i do think yeah it's really important to, like you like the new person's really exciting but like making sure you're like giving everyone attention like you're like you can't just only blow one person like blow them both yeah blow them both at the same well, time and and so th- that's why i said talk about it beforehand right because if if i just want to see my other mm. person hook up with somebody yeah. in like a voyeuristic kind of way then that's not necessary yeah like it doesn't matter true. if either of them are blowing me because that's not why i'm mm. signed up for this right yeah yeah, yeah. But if that's what I thought was going to happen and then it doesn't and they're just going at it, that's yeah. going to be a problem. I would say, like, probably the assumption is everyone's involved. It seems to be in the some default. Way, unless otherwise stated. But, but yeah. You know they, what they say about assumptions, Kyle? They put it in your ass. They put it in your ass. <laughs> they put an ass in you and me. They put, <laughs> they, they put you in my ass. They put my ass with, in you. With presumption. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there's a better joke in there that we'll figure out tomorrow and it won't matter um gayish there's gay- a better joke we'll figure out tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> um i would say encouraging thing to do like you get to try all these things you didn't get to try before like two people blowing one person pretty great pretty hot mm-hmm. um and like, especially when you're like, okay, like when you're both blowing someone and then like the pe- two people blowing the person are like making out like around the dick. Hmm. That's a, that's a, a great use of your time and energy. Mm-hmm. Um, making out with someone while they're getting fucked. That's really hot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Getting spit roasted. Said it again. Mm-hmm. Another million downloads. Mm-hmm. <laughs> High fives. <laughs> all around. <laughs> um, like th- there are two dicks in your mouth at the same time. If you're really i mean this expert level two dicks in your butt at one time yeah or just a that's not holding yours that's <laughs> not that's not happening by chance that's <laughs> hope you might plan for that but yeah, yeah. communicate about that beforehand yeah don't yeah, just yeah. throw them in there no <laughs> a surprise second dick is not always a good surprise mm-hmm. um yeah so the, but there are a lot of fun things that you can uh try out when you're in a threesome that you can't do otherwise um there's also a refreshing factor to it that like having a new energy, a new body, a new set of parameters can, can keep things fresh and yeah. new and interesting and, and, and revitalize your sex life with your partner. Although if that's the only reason you're doing it, there is something to consider of like, that's not going to help. It's not going to, I mean, it could make your connection stronger, but like what is it missing is what you're missing from your sex life that you're trying to use to spice it up. Is that really just that, you don't have a third person there. Like, you know, there, there might be other things going on to evaluate. Absolutely. No, I, I totally agree with that. I guess I'm, I'm thinking more along the lines of like your partner, whoever they are, they have the body, they have the dick, they have the vagina, they have the ass they have. And there are variations on that, that they just can't provide hmm. you because you're given what you're given in life. Yeah. And, um, so, you mean giant dicks, right? This is you're specifically exclusively talking uh, about giant dicks, yeah, right? No, I mean, okay, yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, the, there's there's variety. Variety is the spice of your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Cumin. <laughs> that was the, that was the joke. There was no. <laughs> you can't spell cumin without cum. In <laughs> your ass, my ass. <laughs> Um, and, you know, just, just be chill about it, yo. Get your fuck on. Get your, get your fuck on. Enjoy. Menage a trois. It's a good no. wine. I, yes, that's another important thing. Everything you do from then on has to be in threes. You have to have menage a trois wine. You have to have <laughs> three different kinds of cheese. Oh. You have to have three dildos available. Wait, wasn't that Chris said that about the cheese? 
Oh, that was his gayest thing is like a, a cheese plate. Yeah, you, you have a soft cheese and yeah. you have a stinky cheese. And you, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, do you have any other advice for... I also think... Don't bang uggos. <laughs> That's advice. <laughs> Don't bang uggs. <laughs> hey, well, what if you're into that? They're much wider than really can be useful for any kind of sexual situation. You don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> thick. <laughs> the definition of thick with ten C's. Um, I also think some things like seem exciting, and Mike, you're deep throating that wine bottle. <laughs> <laughs> you're having a threesome with that glass of wine, that bottle of wine and your mouth. Um, <laughs> and you're getting cork. Um, I also think some things are okay to be a fantasy and something you jerk off to, or even talk about, or even get on the apps with your boyfriend and look around like things are okay doing that. And you never have to have the threesome. So window shopping for a threesome is fucking hot. Mm -hmm. It absolutely is. Yeah. Like, I mean, I enjoy this just in general talking about like, Oh, I'm really into that guy. Cause look like even just like walking down the street, hopefully to where they can't hear me, yeah. but <laughs> I don't care. Um, like <laughs> talk, just you are hot, sir. You're Thank hot. you for I like your arms. <laughs> oh no, you behind him. Keep going. Keep it moving. <laughs> um, no, but hey we... babe, look at that guy. You want to fuck him together? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take his mouth. <laughs> you take his mouth. Um, yeah, I think I think it can also be. There's a lot of feelings and things and communication and all that shit that you have to do if you're actually having the threesome. Feelings are so stupid. They're so stupid. <laughs> That's why feelings only have two e's mm. because it's two people. You shouldn't have feelings. You should get field. Mm -hmm. <laughs> field. <laughs> You're apt for three ways. We used to be three <laughs> Um, I think that's all the advice. I, I mean, they're pretty much set for having three ways now, right? <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed them. <laughs> oh, nail them. Nail them. Oh, yeah. Break? Let's take a break. Let's take a break. <laughs> oh, by the way, there's a dude coming over. This is the part where Mike and Kyle take a break. Are we back? We're back. We're back. We are going to do our gayest and straightest. We're going to do our gayest and straightest, but first. Wait, but first, but first. But first, but first. I should not have berated you. About? About not knowing Ariana Grande. I just realized I was that person. Okay, wait. Okay. Ariana Grande... Y used to so she dated pete davidson uh -huh. and then they were gonna get married uh -huh. and then they broke up and then he almost committed suicide or threatened to commit suicide and mm -hmm. then there was this whole big intervention anyway somebody i forget who it was one of the listeners was like uh pete davidson has a giant penis Ooh. and um so then i was like wh like why do you say that <laughs> and then they said there was an interview where Ariana Grande was like, yeah, it's huge, <laughs> right? And then they asked Pete Davidson about it on a radio interview, and he said, she is a tiny person. All <laughs> penises are huge. <laughs> 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 and I thought that was fantastic. Oh, that is really funny. That's Imagine the... being a tiny person, and you could just every dick. All the it's dicks like a, are gigantic. It's a, it's a wonderland of dicks. <sighs> oh, I anyway. wish I were three feet tall. Yeah. So in your fantasies really. <laughs> um i wish that oh no i i dislike when people uh are like you haven't seen this thing or heard this thing i can't believe it oh. that's and our point of the show is that not all gay people know all things so. i thought our friendship was over so it's fine Whew, don't worry we're back on track <laughs> okay okay we can do our stuff but first but first our website is gayishpodcast.com uh we are on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Your mom. And your mom at Gayish Podcast. <laughs> and you can find us on our, we have a Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash Gayish Podcast. Which I'm have, I'm starting to have a hard time keeping up with the Facebook group. <laughs> There's lots going on. <laughs> they entertain themselves yep. now. It's pretty, it's pretty great. <laughs> it's like we had like the third kid and by this time it's like oh just play with each other and we <laughs> mommy and daddy can yeah. go outside kids yeah. fuck this <laughs> um yeah um our hotline you can send us text messages or leave us voicemails is 5855-GAYISH that's 585-542-9474 standard rates apply and our email address is what you'd think it is at gmail.com <laughs> <laughs> gayishpodcast at gmail.com 
I should try to figure out how to have come at gayishpodcast.com. What would that be for? Our inbox. (laughs) (laughs) Dick pics, dick pics, dick pics. Is that where you send anything dirty? Is just... Yeah. Okay. Great. That's a pretty good idea, actually. (laughs) Um, Do you think we should get a P.O. box? Or should I just give out my address? I, we talked about this yeah before. don't give i'm i'm also more worried about things than you are like i don't think i mean i've given my address out to a couple of listeners and awesome things came well d- meaning me i came uh, <laughs> um i don't know do what you want all right well do you, not this episode <laughs> i would yeah i think if you want to give out an address it should be a p.o box yeah what are you expecting of this P.O. box? Ten inch dicks? It's like, it, mm, <laughs> Please don't sever off your dick and mail it in the <gasps> mail. That was part of Future Man. The season two, of Fu- season two of Future Man is out, and you know how much I love Future Man because yeah. I watched the whole thing obsessively. I've already seen all of season two, and in one of the episodes, so the two characters they swapped dicks yes, in the first you season, told me which about is that. why I told you about that. And like, it is just it's cartoonishly ridiculous, gigantic, and that's what makes it funny. Mm-hmm. And it's over and over again. It's a plot device. Mm-hmm. This massive cock. Anyway, there ends up being like a million copies of it made in a time crime kind of a situation. That part doesn't matter. <laughs> But the part, the, the the original owner of the massive penis, they offer him a severed copy of his penis as like a bargaining chip. Like, tell us what we want to know. You can have your old dick back because it was huge. I would, I would probably squeal at that point. But okay, so maybe you can send severed genitalia. <laughs> I mean, you can in the future in a sitcom on Hulu. So yeah, all right. Why not now? <laughs> Why not me and why not now? This is the weirdest ending yeah. in recent memory. Go ahead. Oh, I'm going first? Oh, no, I can go first. That's fine. The, okay. gayest, the gayest thing about me this week is the, the Masked Singer. I can't stop watching it. I watch every episode. The I'm what? like, The Masked Singer. I don't know what It's that on is. Fox. It is a, uh, a reality show where a whole bunch of characters show up as uh, singers in a competition, but they're in like full, you can't see who they are. They're full on masked. Like there's a poodle, there's a unicorn, there's a raven, there's a deer, there's a alien. There's like, there's all of these, they're all the rabbit is, he's fucking amazing. And they're all celebrities, whatever that means, celebrities. Um, and they, but they compete against each other in a singing thing. And then people who whoever gets voted off each week they have to take their mask off and you find out what celebrity it was that's been singing oh. so so far it was like a hot football player and one time it was terry bradshaw one time it was um margaret cho <laughs> like they're all of these celebrities that are underneath of these masks and they sing and and it, i'm just i'm obsessed with it i can't stop i'm like i'm like trying to figure out who they are <laughs> i've got my theories about most of them i'm like i'm glued i can't wait for it to come out i'm excited about it the future of TV is just different variations of singing competitions. <laughs> like, I'm convinced. Yeah. That's yeah. fine. But this one's pretty great. Okay. Uh, next, the straightest thing about me this week, uh, my roommate and I took a hacksaw and a pair of lobbers to our Christmas tree, cut it into 400 pieces, and threw it off of the balcony. What? S- yeah. Oh, because there's like a little <laughs> small forest down at the bottom of your balcony there's like a gully behind the building that our the balcony overlooks and so we just fucking hacked up a dead body that it was a tree but we hacked up a dead body and we buried it together in the in the yard it was i that's the straightest thing i've done in a while i don't know what a (laughs) gobster is or what was the thing you said an axe and a gobster lobbers lobbers lobster got it yeah oh you're now going to get the lobbers Ooh, it's like scissors, but the handles keep going. I get it. Um, I never had a Christmas tree. I mean, this year. I didn't have a Christmas tree this year. That sounded way sadder than I meant it to. Well, no, no, no. I mean, there was that one time you, 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 you put up Christmas lights and then they were like, are they still there? No. Okay. I took them down because I needed to. They were there for to. years. Yeah. So if you got a Christmas tree, like your house would burn down. It would just, no. It, well, one, it'd be fake. And two, I did have one, but I lost it in a breakup. Do you want mine? No. Okay. <laughs> My straightest thing yep. is uh, one of our friends, Carly, was t- teaching me about this exercise I uh, heard her. for your job. Yeah. She's pretty great, right? Mm-hmm. Let's all reflect. You don't know her, but that's fine. Um, 
so about this uh, thing you can do when you have TMJ to like loosen up your jaw because um, I like grind my jaw at night. Yeah. And I put my finger in my mouth to to access the part that you and I was like, oh, I almost threw up. And she's like, you still have a gag reflex. <laughs> so I apparently I, it is surprising. I well, it's but it's just when you come at it from the side, I guess. <laughs> Front ways were good. Side. I don't put it in my jaw too often. So, Aww. you know. Um, hold it room in for your, improvement. Hold in your cheek like a squirrel or something. <laughs> okay. The gayest thing about me is uh, I now am up to knowing. Wait, that was the straightest thing about you? Not having a gag ref or having a gag reflex? Yes. Got it. Yes. Straight dudes. I was thinking more. I was thinking. I sorry. I thought Carly's comment was the thing about you. Mm. Wait, you have a gag reflex? And oh, you know, I got it. Got it. I'll cut all this. Go. I mean. Some of these could go either way, depending on how you say them, which is the fun of it. Three ways. Three ways. Um, gayest, <laughs> the gayest thing about me is I think I'm now up to like knowing four different kinds of Real Housewives and like all the backstory and the 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 arguments they've had and where the relationships are at. And I fucking love the reunion shows, even though they're so dumb. All of it is so dumb, and I keep knowing it's so dumb, but I keep watching all of them, and yeah. it's it's I kind of like it. I want to be in a reality show. And then after I watch them, I start acting like them. Like I start like you, you, like I can create drama from anything. If I knew I was being filmed, like mostly I don't give a shit about stuff. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. it just be so fun. Do you like the real housewives more or less than the fake reality show on 30 rock? Well, that is gets even funnier now because like something I didn't get, which they do all the time is like, They'll have an argument on 30 Rock. It was like they had an argument and she's like, I, I didn't say it. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. And then they do a flashback to what they're talking about. Yeah. And they're saying, I didn't say it. Yes, I, you did. Like, that's like how all of their arguments are these things about like, you said this thing to that person, but not to me. So I'm mad at you for that thing. And then they'll like bring it up later and be like, no, we're still mad at you. And, and like, then sides will form. And like, it's this crazy effect where one, one misspeaking can turn into an entire franchise. God, I wish people would just like pay that much attention to Congress. <laughs> it could be that interesting. You, like everything we... you just said applies to Congress. Yeah, but like <laughs> C-SPAN, step it up. <laughs> New yes. reality show. Yes. My favorite senator. Give the congressman wine <laughs> and film that shit. What if we reenacted things that happen in Congress in a reality show? Mm -hmm. And like then it, instead of like gross old men arguing about stuff, we could turn them into hot women <laughs> yeah. arguing. And then people would be like, oh, I care now. Donna, I know I invited you to my party, but uh, I'm... I think it's better for security reasons if you don't come or like we pick a different date. <laughs> but my, I was supposed to give a big speech at your party. Well, you're not invited. Mm. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Is that it? I think so. All right. A special thank you as always to Charlie Finn for the use of our theme music. Thank you to the pairs and pairs and pairs of boys I've had threesomes with. You've filled my soul. Thank you to the creator of Threender. <laughs> I hope you and your girlfriend are still together. And that you have plenty of dirty socks left over. <laughs> right? No, they weren't. Yeah. Okay. And thanks to PhD Ryan Scotes. Scotes. Scotes McGoats. Scotes McGoats for your degree in threesons. Um, so... That's it. This has been Gayish. I'm Mike Johnson. I'm Kyle Getz. Until next week, be butch, be fabulous, be you. Do and you and you. What I, want. <laughs> I take girls and maybe guys. I improvise and I advise. Back it up and hear me as I will sing. Hey, and by the way. hear what your words bring oh p.s i'm gay -ish. thank you next thanks next
Thank you, next. <laughs> All right, I'll do better. 